Every time I think of the show, I think of freaking forever. Courage to carry it, though. What's good, y'all? Your main man, Master Sun here, leader of the Master Knights of the Round Table. Company one, subscribe to the Spin Move. Is my screen blurry? Is my eye infection really still there? I feel weird, y'all. I do. The trying to degree weather is getting to me. Anyways, when it comes to this show, the naughtiest show of the season, I'm giving the disgraced noble lady I rescued a crash course in naughtiness. Were y'all able to tell I just read that off the goddamn screen? This is a show this season I have not done one video for it. But now that I finished it, on time apparently, I do want to briefly talk about it. And I say briefly because I did back on a lot of it. Now for nobody who has seen this show or heard of this show, there's nothing that you can take in this. And maybe that's our own fault for simply jumping the gun, but anime and naughty, naughtiness. Of course, it's always original source material. People already knew about this show before it came out, already knew the answer to this. But for everybody else who wanna be fake as fuck, you would think this would be a big ass third show. Hell, even the original character design just compliment his fan service. Now, I will say I didn't walk into this show expecting a huge ashy, but I did have my presumptuous thoughts. However, once again, it is nothing like that at all. And the way I'm about to come at the show can be off-putting to some people, and some people may disagree with it with certain parts of it. But honestly, when it comes to naughtiness, it's only kind of made for kids. The tone of this show, the tone it gives off is simply just PG on it. Now, our main female here being Charlotte, her being exiled because of some bullshit that, her, that the press got involved, and there's things of her being whipped and whatnot, being basically mistreated before she was completely exiled. Of course, that does go towards a certain territory. At the end of the day, this is indeed a TV-14 show. But after Alan finds her, in the woods, takes her in as the Great Demon Lord. Alan is the main guy with Great Demon Lord. He's black and white here. He comes to find that Charlotte has been confined and basically doesn't know anything too much about the outside world, outside life, or how to actually, pro, quote unquote, enjoy herself. And since Charlotte was exiled from the country due to false charges, as in she wasn't supposed to be exiled in the first place, but even if she did go back, she would just be abused again. Alan makes it his business to show her the joys of life. However, he is also an expert in naughtiness and naughty things. Which brings me to my previous point. Matter of fact, let's do it like this. You notice this is the poster for this show, right? You notice how around this day you got a bunch of candy and sweets being circled everywhere? Let's just finish the picture being painted for the show when it comes to naughtiness. Episode 1, the huge naughty things that Alan tried, tries to teach Charlotte that she should be able to enjoy is staying up late and eating sweets for dinner. Being able to enjoy sugary sweets is one thing, but doing so past your bedtime is simply blasphemous behavior to Charlotte. And it actually takes Alan a handful of tries not to mention putting a spell on himself that can make off him there and there if Charlotte doesn't comply to do these naughty things. Even though this man is pretty much immortal, and Charlotte knows that. But that's the picture painted for the toad of this show. Again, that's something you would tell a kid not to do. Like, don't stay up at your bedtime, and don't ruin your dinner by eating too many sweets, and be sure to brush your teeth before going to bed. Like, if you was watching this with your kid there, you would really point at that and be like, hey, they said that's naughty, don't do it. And stuff like this happens throughout almost the entire show. Like, maybe around like the second, a little bit past the second half when we get into some deeper conflicts. Another thing I would compare this show to is My Happy Marriage. Now, to be fair, the tone of My Happy Marriage is vastly different. I mean, when it came to me, her, her conflict going on with all that. Uh, there's different ways to get exiled from your family, y'all. Freaking Island, all he had to do was pick up a girl in the forest. Lord Kudo had to damn to burn the whole village down. But the comparison I'm making here is honestly when it comes to, like, the language and stuff like that. Because in My Happy Marriage, they barely was even cussing. There was, like, one time that Kudo cussed when he had his boy and called him a rat bastard. <laughs> See, my funniest part of that show. Y'all did see My Happy Marriage, right? And this show is the same. Now, like I said, I did back around a handful of this show, so if I'm wrong, go ahead and correct me. But I don't recall them cussing one time in this show. There is no swears. And despite what I said when it came to Charlotte being quote-unquote abused by her family, that topic isn't really visited much. At least not in the sense of what they've done to her. Matter of fact, I can only think of like three times. Once at the beginning and once at the finale. And this show has a full episode, but bro, even the swimsuits they have on covers damn near everything. There was a time early in the show where Alan's sister showed up and they had to give freaking Charlotte a new attire so she wouldn't get recognized. And the naughtiest things about that was that Alan was able to see her freaking angles. Once again, going at this damn poster, to be fair, Alan's sister does look like this. Handful of cleavage out there and a strapless bra. We do have a member of the main character cast that shows up more than often not wearing a shirt. 
But outside that kind of stuff, really the fan service in the show is freaking zero. Does none. To say it one last time, I see this show as the if you want to watch new animes but have kids, just bring the whole family to watch it kind of shit. Bond with your family and watch the show. Then of course, with that being said, the biggest thing that goes on in the show is indeed building the apparent relationship between Island and Charlotte. Because that's the master of this mansion that Charlotte is living in, and also the him being Alice, Alice being her teacher of mentor when it comes to this crash course of naughtiness. Alan becomes very much overprotective of Charlotte, and he pretty much stresses over the little things when it comes to her, as in things of her even going out on her own. And to be fair, the very nice, simple, but very naivety nature of Charlotte, you can't completely blame him. But Charlotte really is more the character that is typically well liked by everybody, and we friends, animals really easily. And while Alan being a demi lord, demi lord is very much respected. However, hmm, that's like a, somebody in the show that people want to cross paths with. Kind of yin yang thing going on. But that being said, it's pretty much the ship that goes on between them two. Yes, I'm talking romance. And the show is one of those things where it's obviously real. Charlotte and Alan being in love with each other is very apparent. But again, with this, the tone of the show this is and the type of character these two are, they're never. I, I hate the way you say this, honestly. But in the start of it all, right, <laughs> it's apparent that they're not they're gonna make a move on their own. So what happens is, Alice's sister and the male lady, sorry about names right now, and other various characters in the show, they go out their way to try to push these two together and put them in situations where it's like, where it's like you know, this will help them build a relationship, this will give Alice the opportunity to make a move, this will help Charlotte say this, this, and that. But of course, in turn, when stuff like that happens for people who need to organically get together on their own, which has already started, interfering with that is just pretty much a huge cock block. I'm not trying to spoil too bad just in case, so I'm not even going to mention the last episode here, but are oh, you motherfucking... That was disgraceful. But the romance in this show would seem more so as a romantic comedy kind of thing, because that's foremost, it never actually happens. I just said no spoilers in yet. But, on the real, yeah, pretty much, you know... They're put in these situations which doesn't actually work ever. However, it is kind of funny here and there to see it happen. Just to see what their reaction would be into new circumstances. It's really a basic rom-com feel in the first place, and that's what how rom-coms are kind of set up. Putting the main ship into situations to decide to strengthen the relationship or at least do it for comedic value. And lastly, the big thing to come out of this show is indeed the final conflict involving Charlie's sister, Natalia. I want to officially say this is spoiler territory, so if you do want to watch this show but don't want to be too spoiled on the last few episodes, Peace out. Thanks for watching. But for everyone else, yes, we indeed have to infiltrate Natalia's school and check up on her because apparently she's becoming a bad girl. Not naughty. Bad. Ooh. Not story short without any actual guidance, right? She not necessarily becomes a bully in that school for real, but she becomes kind of that tough kid that doesn't really take authority well and any kind of thing that kind of pushes it against her, she pushes back, but in more of a violent nature. Assemble the posse that listens to her that kind of deals to her every well. And Charlotte, again, being the type of character she is, seeing Natalia become quote unquote a bad girl is simply terrifying. And Alan, being the character he is, can't have Charlotte being this upset, so he opts in to go help out and becomes a professor at that school and try to see what's up. However, again, Charlotte has to be in disguise because she is a sex idol, so she becomes Charlotte, a black haired girl with glasses. Which she dons a couple of times in this show, actually. And of course, of course, I'm probably meeting Natalia. She's like, fuck all y'all, but you guys are trying to help. You're trying, you're trying to help somebody who don't need help. Fuck you. Denial. Now, I don't want to get too deep in that, but long story short, Alan eventually slips in asking Natalia about her sister, and Natalia straight to shut it down, saying, don't ask her about that. Giving him the feel that he that she resents Charlotte. However, it's the way opposite. She resents everybody else that resents Charlotte. <laughs> However, she resents herself the most to not be able to do anything about it at the time. Which is why she became the quote unquote bad girl that she is, a quest for power to get stronger and stronger to be able to crush the said people who mistreated her sister. And the rat bastard that took her away. I guess there is two sides of every coin. Fuck the people who kicked her out, but fuck the people keeping her from getting <laughs> captive, right? A reminder that that second half was said to Charlotte while she was still in disguise. There's a big sound man that attacks, of course. Immediately after Charlotte figured out the truth about Natalia and how she feels about her, she, her identity is revealed. Alan comes in and handle it. But I want to end this video off by saying, when it comes to this show continuing and a possible season two, not only do I believe it will happen, I believe it's far too simple. As far as popularity goes, I honestly have no idea how well this show performs. But if it comes to doing a season two of the show, it is so freaking easy. 
Again, I understand there's already a source material to this, so it's not like I'm saying anything that needs to happen or that hasn't already happened. But it's kind of just like you have enough dynamics in the show to already run with in the first place, and the independent burial of Natalia, Charlotte's sister, just kind of sets everything off. First and foremost, I'm pretty sure there's plenty of more naughty things you can come up with. And even now, you can easily rehash these naughty things by just adding Natalia in the mix and being like, what the fuck? And the misunderstanding running gag of Natalia, because once again, when she get, finally got to Island, he thought he was just simply trying to seduce her. That could easily be a running gag that you do throughout the entirety of a season two. And Natalia can play that freaking <laughs> role for every character in the show, honestly. Especially Island's sister. Add on the fact that your last scene in the show before the ending was Charlotte's family being notified where Charlotte is, so now they're going to be playing a much bigger role as the actual plot. The goddamn show writes itself, man. To my understanding, no announcement has been made, but if this show never gets a season 2, that would be disappointing. But that being said, my overall thoughts on this show is indeed good. I guess the worst way I can put it is honestly when it comes to a lot of things that we've seen this year, let alone this season, the show by no means is a standout. If you skip it, uh, I'm not mad I watched it. Kinda. And one last time, if it does come back, we'll do it all again. If you watch this video, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Like this video for me, and I'll see y'all. Peace out, subscribe to the spin move. Mm -hmm. I need to change all the lines on.